Today I am watching Murphy Napier. They're doing a Harry Potter quiz. Lovely. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am going to be doing an update for the indie read along for Tarden Danes. Indie read along. So for April, I read The Trader of Saigon by Lucy Cruikshanks, and I'm going to review that and give that a rating in a minute. First, I want to actually let you know what the May books will be. The date, by the way, when we're going to post our reviews will be included below. But in May, as this actually is technically not really an indie book, I figured, what the hell, we're going to do two. So in May, I'm going to be reading Robert Michael's The Demon in the Trees by Ben Sanders. And I'm going to be reading The Vulnerable Gods by Todd Wittenmeyer. I have folded that corner down. Sorry, Todd, I've already damaged your book. So these are going to be the two books I'm going to be reading in May. Todd will also be picking up a book on his end, so check below for the link to his channel where you can find out more. And if you don't fancy reading either of these or you don't fancy Todd's choice, feel free just to pick up an indie book of your choice. You know, we're all about encouraging people to read read a bit more indie. Now, with that admin out of the way, let's have a look at The Trader of Saigon. So this is by Lucy Cruikshanks, who is Lucy from Book Hacks here on uh, Booktube. It's actually really cute right at the beginning where we have the dedication. It's just for Scott. And if you watch Book Hacks on YouTube, then you will know Scott. So there. It's actually printed uh, by Heron Books, which is an imprint of Quercus, which is why I say it's not really an indie. It's also, you might be able to see, it's slightly mucky on the side because I accidentally... <laughs> I accidentally dropped it in a puddle, but it's fine. It is fine. It's actually held up pretty well considering so I'm gonna read you the blurb It says shortlisted for the Guardian not the Booker Prize Vietnam 1980s Propelled by greed fear and hope three desperate lives are about to collide Alexander a US Army deserter engaged in the dark business of trading women Han a girl trapped in poverty who believes Alexander is the answer to her prayers and fuck a businessman who gambled everything to save his family and must now pay his debts. From a society torn apart by war comes a heartwarming tale of salvation and redemption. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's really well done. That's the first thing that I realised and why I kind of immediately was like, I can't, I can't really use this for the indie read-along, I don't think. But I didn't realise until I'd announced it. So it's very nicely put together, very professionally done. Really nice cover design as well. The interior layout is great. Some overall thoughts, I mean... First of all, straight away, you're thrown right into this sense of place. So I'm going to read you just a few of the little descriptive bits from right at the beginning. So this is the opening paragraph. All that was left of the little lizard was a skeleton. It was trapped beneath the browning tape which held the tattered mosquito net across the window. Tail curled, body strained and snaking, it looked like it had struggled to the very end. Alexander and the lizard sat together in the Dusty Cafe in Hanoi's old quarter, watching people and sharing time. Alexander was stony-faced, dead teeth bared, the lizard smiled. And then another great little bit of descriptiveness here. Descriptive description, that's what we're going for. Dusk was starting to creep in, but the air still boiled. In the searing heat, the sewers sweated, and hot, wet air rose up from underground and soaked the people with stench. All along the tree-lined street, shops and eateries spilled out from their doorways. Women sat on the tiled steps, fanning their children with the latest order of government pamphlets. Faded red flags hung from every awning, and they drooped as though weary of the heat too, and the strain of parading their loyalty. A food hawker wiped shimmering grease from her cheekbones and scraped her ladle around the rim of her broth bowl, calling out to those on the pavement. The thin, breathless whistle of bicycle spokes rang out as a stream of riders slipped ceaselessly by. I just think it's, it really does, you know, a lot of books it takes you a while to really build up the sense of place and, and the setting and, and this is just straight away, you know you're in Vietnam, you know. And I think um, you can tell that Lucy spent some time there, you know. She, she's not just Googled it. <laughs> she's, you know, she's walked along these streets and she smelled these smells and I think that's pretty interesting in the way that she managed to work it into the book. There's some great little bits of dialogue as well. I like this bit here, so... So, um, so, so Quan says, perhaps we should get a wooden fish for dad. Like the story. You know, the story about the miser who only gave his family rice to eat and nothing else. He hung a wooden fish on the wall above the dinner table and told his children that every time they ate a mouthful of rice, they should look at the fish and pretend to take a bite. He told them to make chewing noises and say how good it tasted. 
The miser's youngest child was very small and didn't understand what his father had told him. He looked at the fish and made loud noises, slurping and slopping and licking his lips for a whole minute long. The miser's face went red and his eyes bulged with anger and he shouted at his son, I told you to take just one bite. Don't you know how expensive fish is these days? Which I thought was a good story and just, you know, it's nice when you have like a little story within a story like that. Like a little, almost like a little folk tale that's got kind of passed along in, in the family. I think what's interesting as well is, so Alexander is basic, he's basically a people trafficker who's, who's taking these girls and selling them to the highest bidder for sex or a second wife or slavery or whatever. And um, he's quite a chilling character. I thought he was a good antagonist in it because he's quite unpredictable as well. You don't know what he's going to do. Uh, but he says here, she talked so little that he hadn't been able to see her teeth. He would need to get a better look next time. Teeth were expensive to mend or to pull. He couldn't sell a girl with bad teeth. And I mean, it's dark, but it's a nice touch as, you know, as an author, I think, to to think that to think that through that if you were trafficking girls yeah you wouldn't you wouldn't want ones with bad teeth because you don't want to have to fix them you know plus nobody wants to buy a girl with horrible teeth i said that as though i regularly go girl shopping i i don't but you know what i mean uh you know i think the rich american buyers or whatever are gonna want someone who, who's got a nice smile i'm gonna read you a bit here as well because a lot of this sort of deals with the aftermath of the vietnam war so alexander himself he sort of saw these horrors throughout the war and that's kind of what inspired him as a person. But equally, because this is set in Vietnam after the war, I don't know, it just, it, it helps to build the scene some more, I think. So we're talking about Alexander here, and it says, His sergeant was captured that day, a well-liked man with three kids at home and a rollicking belly laugh. The Viet Cong had snatched him away in the frenzy, and it was four days before they returned him. Alexander found his body tied to the trunk of a tree by a rope around his neck. His eyes and his teeth had been plucked from his head and the bones in his legs were broken. In the wet, broiling heat, his body had swelled and his decomposing flesh made the pools of rainwater bubble as if it were boiling. If nothing else, Alexander knew this memory was entirely real. The solid column of black ants that marched over the sergeant's body, backwards and forwards, disappearing into his empty eye socket and emerging with morsels of glossy human pinkness held aloft and bobbing above their heads, was seared into the back of his retinas. He remembered how the dead weight and wallowing texture of the sergeant's bloated limbs made him impossible to lift. So they cut him down and rolled him into a poncho to carry him back to their base. They hauled a crude trail through the rough forest floor and up the side of the hilly basin as they walked, and the merciless undergrowth slit the skin on Alexander's arms, legs and torso to shreds. Then bloody fuck gets himself into some trouble. He goes to Fantan Alley, so it says, um... In Fantan Alley, they didn't play with copper coins either, nor did they play with beans or buttons. Here they played with the teeth of men who hadn't paid their debts, wrenched from their open mouths as they pleaded for mercy. He looked at the large pile of chipped teeth, yellow, black and bloodied, in the dish at the croupier's side. He licked his tongue around his dry mouth and over his soft, sensitive gums. It's weird, actually. That's a couple of bits in a row where it's on a, been on about teeth. So, as well as the teeth of the girls, you've got the teeth here and, and whatnot. And, believe it or not, I'm currently reading Sharp Objects by Gillian Flynn. And, uh, yeah, I know, I, I didn't like Gone Girl as well. But this one, this one's alright, I'm enjoying it. But the killer in that is pulling people's teeth out of their heads. So, for some reason recently, I've just read, like, book after book where there's been weird teeth things happening. And obviously you know when this character goes into this alley where they go gambling. You're like, this is not going to work well for this dude. And uh, yes, it doesn't. He makes some very poor decisions. So Alexander, although he is actually American, an ex-soldier, he pretends to be Russian and speaks Russian. And we have this bit where he ends up with the girl in his kind of, in his company, I guess we'll say. And um, she offers to cook him some of this Russian food. And he's like, no! And it's because she doesn't realise that obviously he's not actually Russian. So basically... What happens? Spoiler alert here. This is the spoilery part. So fuck loses his daughter trying to gamble her. He he gambles her away in like a sort of... Basically he loses all of his money and then he's like, double or nothing, I'll give you my daughter. Well, somebody else asks for his daughter and he's like, go on then, I'll bet her. Turns out predictably bad. And she goes mental and goes, how could you? And he says, I know, I made a mistake. I'm so sorry. And it's like, it's a bit more than a mistake, mate. In terms of the grand scheme of things, I would say you made a monumental cock-up. It never ends well when people bet their daughters. Have you never seen that happen before? I also like the moment at which we understand what Fuck's plan is, because he does end up giving his, his daughter over. 
and I'm not going to reveal what happens after that. But I was like, why are you doing this? This is a really bad idea. And then it turns out he did have a plan, so that was good. What's sad as well is that is that this girl herself, the one who's basically being people trafficked, she kind of blames herself. She thinks it's her fault. And I like as well the author's note. Uh, it talks about here, the trader of Saigon started life on a flight between Singapore and Ho Chi Minh City, formerly Saigon, in 2007. So she was travelling with Scott and they were talking to a, a dude sat next to them and, and that's where the idea came from. Finally, I will also mention it has some questions for some reading groups as well. So if you're in a book club, you might be interested. There are also, well, there's another book after this one and I believe she's working on a third in the series. So I don't know whether I'll get to them, but I may do at some point. Overall, I thought this was pretty good. I mean, in my rating, I would give this a four out of five. It was, you know, it was a good story, kept me going to the end. Based on mine and Todd's, kind of rating system five is for so good it should be professionally published so i guess this is a five on that because it has been professionally published and it does deserve it but all in all i enjoyed this book and if you fancy it why not go ahead and check it out the trader of saigon by lucy crookshanks and on that note i'm running out of battery so thanks a lot for watching don't forget to hit subscribe if you've enjoyed this video hit that like button if you'd like to and i'll see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot Bye bye